Good afternoon and welcome to Keys TV News, live on keysnews.net on this lovely St David's Day. I'm Emily Bergen. The body of a man has been found in Cholton earlier this morning. An officer on patrol came across the body of the man on the street on Wilbraham Road. Part of the road has been closed and police have launched an investigation into the cause of the death. C CCTV footage has been released of a man wanted in connection with thefts at Salford Royal Hospital in the last two weeks. A mobile phone and wallet containing cash was stolen from a drawer whilst a patient was undergoing surgery. In another incident, almost £100 was stolen on the same ward. The suspect is described as a white male in his 20s of medium build and with balding hair. 44 people have been arrested in a week-long crackdown on organised crime. Operation Skyhawk was launched by Salford Police Division in November to help tackle crime. More than 50 officers took part in the initiative and arrests were made for crimes including possession of a firearm, burglary and drug-related crime. Salford City Council is making £23 million worth of cuts in a bid to make savings. Rachel Hesselhurst joins me in the studio now to tell us more. Rachel, what happened? Well, Emily, amongst the proposals are a 5% cut for the Lowry Centre, a £50,000 reduction in the Media City budget and deferral of the BBC Philharmonic Orchestra sponsorship. This is because the government has cost Salford residents £100 million worth of cuts and 1,000 job losses. Mayor Ian Stewart has said the council has worked hard to maintain its council tax frees, but claimed that the cuts had been forced on them by government policy. The meeting agreed a local council tax support scheme which is designed to protect claimants as much as possible from the government's reduction in funding. Steve North, the Salford City Unison branch secretary, was one of a number of people outside the Civic Centre protesting against the cuts. Campaigners from Salford against the cuts and United Service Users Committee are planning more protests in the weeks ahead. Back to you, Emily. Residents in Greater Manchester have expressed concern that the streets are getting more dangerous after two police officers were injured in a hip and run incident. Rachel Drabble reports. Two police officers had stopped the suspect car on Rochdale Road, Harper Hay. As they approached to speak to the driver, it reversed into them and sped off. I'm here in Harper Hay where on Sunday night at 10.50pm two police officers fell victim to a hit and run incident. One officer suffered a fractured skull and the other a fractured wrist. Wayne Crompton has been arrested and charged with two counts of grievous bodily harm with intent as well as dangerous driving and driving without insurance. We asked local people about how safe they felt with the Greater Manchester Police under fire and patrolling our streets. Yeah, I feel pretty safe. I live next door to a police station, so I always see them knocking about. Not very safe. Well, basically, when you've got the community police on here, you don't see them, you don't see them very often. Well, they, they do things for some people and others that they, they don't, do they? Uh, well, they seem to do a good job. Uh, don't, don't really seem to have much trouble around here. It's, it's fairly quiet, fairly safe. They seem to be doing all right. This is Rachel Drabble reporting for Keys TV News. A robot that can supervise and entertain elderly people has been invented by a University of Salford student. PhD student Antonio Espinjargiro has developed the P37S65, also known as the CareBot, to provide care to the elderly. The invention is a complex mix of sensors, electronics and mechanics. The CareBot can provide meaningful interaction to supplement human contact. P37S65 is a social yeah. assisted robot that can provide supervision, cognitive assistance and entertainment. So basically, supervision, it can be remotely controlled uh, in another location for establishing, for example, a video vigilance or um, establishing a conversation, checking if someone takes their medications, establishing a conversation between a caregiver, a GP and an elderly person. Meanwhile, students at Salford University are celebrating after winning a six-week project to create an advertisement for computer company Hewlett Packard. Our reporter Antonia Hunter has more. Hewlett Packard and the University of Salford combined to create a competition for students to enter. The students produced their own video advert and marketing campaign to be in with a chance of winning a thousand pounds and a state-of-the-art desktop computer set. Based of the results and announcement of the winner took place in the egg at Media City UK. A representative of Hewlett Packard came to the campus to give the prizes to the winners who were chosen by the managers of the company. 
The three winners were Nathan Stadden, Ellis Cullen and Jack Jennings, who have no doubt shown Salford University in a very positive light. Antonia Hunter reporting for Keys News. And now joining us in the studio, we have Terry Durkin from HP and Nathan Stadden, one of the winners of the HP Video Student Awards. Hello and welcome. So could you just explain the competition for me, please? Yeah, sure. Uh, one of my uh, team, uh, who's a product manager for our uh, business desktops uh, business, uh, wanted to do something creative in terms of how we would market our products to customers. And so he came up with the idea of running a student video competition and uh, we already had some connections with the University of Salford and Media City and so he said okay well maybe we can do something where we uh, fund uh, four or five teams to make videos uh, highlighting the key selling points of our products. Okay and um, what were the entries from Salford students like? Well the, the entries were fantastic so uh, <laughs> I think there were uh, three or four things that I'd, I'd say about them. First of all there was uh, a completely different approach to the the competition from the five teams so uh, each of them had its had its merits and uh, I think sort of the teams did a fantastic job in trying to identify what we were trying to convey to, to our customers. Uh, I think secondly uh, we showed the the entry sort of widely in HP and a lot of people found them very entertaining some were very funny but we also found uses for the videos uh, which we're going to develop now uh, in terms of training and internal communications, which we hadn't thought of at all at the start. And I guess the third thing is, uh, you know, we're very keen now to talk with Salford about how we develop things in the future. Brilliant. Um, so what were you looking for in a winning video? Well, I think initially we set out trying to think how could we get to our small, medium-sized customers and uh, uh, really use the videos as a marketing tool to, 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 to get to them in a way that was interesting and a, a little bit less corporate than normal. And, uh, and I guess sort of the, the project evolved for us over time. So that's definitely one thing that's happening now. And we're having a lot of uh, hits on, on, the, on the videos and connections into the web pages that we have. But actually, we've got a lot more out of it in terms of uh, the work that we do in the community, the connections we have with Salford University, and, and, and really how we can put something back in the community going forwards. Brilliant. Thank you. So Nathan, you're part, oh. of, part of the winning team. Could you tell me how you came up with the idea for your video? Um, we kind of came up with the idea whilst coming up with ideas. The idea is a, it's a, it's a mockumentary okay. about HP giving uh, students uh, the job to create a viral okay. campaign video for them. So it's kind of us looking at ourselves in a kind of funny light. Okay. So what were the best and worst bits of making the video? Um, one of the best bits was probably uh, pouring uh, a dumper truck of sand on a computer to test its uh, dust tolerance test. Right. Uh, the worst is probably for one of our teammates uh, called Frank, who uh, had to wear a, um, a science jacket thing um, that was left out in the rain oh, no. for a few <laughs> days. And on the video, you can actually see through the, the coat and actually see his uh, t shirt oh. underneath. And um, how did you feel today when you got the certificate and you won? Um, <coughs> quite surprised really because there were a lot of teams that did did a really good job. Um, so quite surprised. We were all we were, uh, secretly kind of confident but we didn't we didn't know we were going to win really. Okay. And what do you hope to achieve after this now? Um, well the money will go towards future projects um, and um, it's just a really good CV booster, really, for future future prospects. Brilliant. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Manchester's Lesbian and Gay Foundation have been busy with their latest campaign. The Love Equal Marriage Tour has been in and around the boroughs of Manchester in order to drum up support for marriage equality. Jonathan Blackburn reports. Armed with bells, balloons and banners, the Manchester-based charity has been on the warpath and employed all kinds of stylish soldiers to attract attention to themselves. Manchester, a city renowned for its LGBT community and its presence. But, in with the recent passing of the Equal Marriage Bill, what does the public think about them now? The LGF have been finding out with the latest campaign. 
Well, the latest campaign is called Love Equal Marriage, and this is basically uh, in response to the uh, same-sex marriage bill that's trying to go through Parliament at the moment. This is to allow same-sex couples to get married, and that's using the terminology uh, married, because at the moment in this country we can have civil partnerships between two people of the same sex, but uh, not being able to use the, the phrase married. But the team have been all over Manchester, asking members of the public to have a photo under their equal marriage arch, sign their names to show support, and to take leaflets offering more information. The LGF was first established in April 2000. They have since been pivotal in ensuring adoption rights, equalising the age of consent, and providing help on a one-to-one -one basis. So basically we've been to every borough of Greater Manchester. We started off in uh, Trafford on Monday morning and we've finished up here uh, at Albert Square in Manchester. And we've been visiting people up and down uh, Greater Manchester and asking them to show their support, regardless of their own sexuality. It's about them showing support to same-sex couples uh, and not being afraid to say that they support uh, the Equal Marriage Bill. So it's really just been trying to engage with people from all over Greater Manchester, getting their photograph taken in all of wedding arch that you can see behind me and uh, and getting them to show their support in a very visual way. The tour, which ended in Albert Square, had been positively received despite opposition from some religious groups and a small minority of LGBT people. This is Jonathan Blackburn reporting for Key TV News. Looking ahead to another exciting week of sport, Tom Deegan joins me in the studio. Tom, what's happening with the Northwest Premier League teams? Well, on Saturday, Emily, Everton Reading, Man United entertain Norwich and um, Wigan have the late kick off on Saturday against Liverpool. On Monday, Villa uh, entertain Manchester City. And that's a roundup for this week. And uh, what are the rugby league fixtures? Um, tonight, on Friday, Salford Reds visit the London, London Broncos. Uh, Hull KR on Sunday uh, take on Warrington Wolves, with Castlefield Tigers visiting uh, Wigan, Warri Wigan Warriors. Thank you very much. A prestigious annual award ceremony has taken place at Media City UK. The Royal Television Society is celebrating the best young talent in the North West. The Student Television Awards took place to celebrate the upcoming talents in the media industry. Throughout the day, the RTS organised talks with media professionals at the University of Salford. Students from all over the UK came to Media City campus to see the postgraduate opportunities available. Richard Frediani, the programme editor of ITV News, gave a talk about teamwork. I think awards are always useful in that it um, sets a standard for, for what, what's been broadcast in the previous years. It is something for people to um, aspire to, but also something for people to learn from. You know, I've been involved in many a different type of award, and whether you win or lose, you often look at the entries, you look at the finalists, you see tricks, ideas that you might want to copy and you see the standard of work that's been around in the industry over the previous 12 months. There were talks from the casting people of controversial yet popular reality show The Valleys and also producers from Shine North as well as Salford University alumni. Helen Buller from CBBC spoke of the benefits of the event. Any opportunity that you can find to ask the bespoke questions that you have about your own ambitions or dreams or progress then the better um, and as I say I, I just got grabbed by um, a very charming trio who while they were asking questions about CBBC took the opportunity to fill me in on their own documentary project those opportunities are invaluable um, because when we come to events like this it's brilliant to see the you know the amount of people that have turned out it's slightly bemusing to see the levels of talent in the room and sometimes it's just helping us to make up our minds about who we're going to remember on any one day. Like watching TV and After the day's events came the award ceremony at BBC Key House, House presented by Leah Gooding, the presenter from Newsround. There were four categories with three nominees in each. They were factual, animation, fiction and entertainment. Manchester College did the best, taking home two awards for fiction and entertainment. The day was a huge success and extremely interesting for potential and budding postgraduates. Don't forget, in two weeks' time, Keys TV News will be running our very first 12-hour news marathon in aid of comic relief. There will be a Keys News breakfast special, a report on global immigration, and a football panel show, and much more. The event is set to kick off at 7am, and you can find the donations page on Twitter at, Key at Keys TV News. That's all from us today. Remember, you can watch Keys TV News live every Friday at 1.30pm. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.